Hello and welcome to Alive Church. Alive Church is a multi-site church with locations in Lincoln, Grantham, Gainsborough, Scunthorpe and in Wyndham. Each week we have worship led by our Alive Church worship team and the word is brought by one of our pastors.
going to hear a word from one of our location pastors here at Alive. Let's hear from them now. Good morning Alive Church, it's great to be with you and a privilege to be sharing with you this morning as we continue our series on looking at the signs of the kingdom. I'd love to remind you of the portion of scripture that we're focusing on, on in Isaiah 61. It says this, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. So this week we're going to focus on comfort as a sign of kingdom living. I'd love to explore with you this morning what the heart of Jesus is like in terms of comfort. It says in Matthew 11 verses 28 to 30, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
I quite often like to read verses in the message interpretation of the Bible because it puts it in a different slant. And this is what it says in the message. It says, are you tired, worn out, burdened out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. A sign of the kingdom is comfort and Jesus invites us to come and know his rest and to take his yoke upon us. Today, I invite you to encounter Jesus, to know the rest that only he can give and the comfort that only he can provide. I have three thoughts that I'd love to share with you this morning. The first, comfort is for all. The first rest that Jesus offers in his kingdom is that of coming to him. Verse 28 says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. The comfort he offers is not just physical or emotional comfort that our bodies crave, but a comfort that is at a deep spiritual level, comfort for our souls. I'm sure you all agree that we all get weary at times, whether it's the constant pressure of work or family life, we all get tired and thankfully Jesus recognises this. God rested on the seventh day of creation. He acknowledges the need for rest. But this goes deeper, it's comfort for all who mourn. We all at times feel sorrow, regret or sadness, but we also carry that shame and guilt for our sin, mourning the things that maybe we've done wrong. We live in a broken world. But what does Jesus have in the midst of all this? It's rest, at the deepest possible level, at the soulish level, Maybe we can't turn off the anxiety of another uncertain day. But Jesus says, I'm already out there. I'm ahead of you. I know how this will end. And no matter what comes, no one can snatch you from my hands. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Jesus Christ. So here's the thing, through salvation, we find rest for our souls. Jesus offers rest that we thought was never possible. When we come to him, we come to the answer of our life's pursuits. It's him, the most loving, accessible, approachable, kind, gentle and lowly person in the universe. He's our saviour, he's our Lord. He's our rest. And the best news of all is that this comfort and rest is on offer to all. We just need to come to him. Secondly, comfort is work. It says, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This verse is a bit surprising, isn't it? Jesus offers rest and then immediately says, take my yoke upon you. He didn't say, take my seat or take my bed or take my vacation. He said, take my yoke. If we think about what a yoke is, it's an agricultural piece of equipment and farmers place a yoke on animals to use their strength to plough fields. And more often than not, it is an animals, animals that are side by side. So how does this make sense? How is a yoke the natural outflow of the rest that Jesus gives? In verse 30, we see his yoke is easy. It's not heavy, it's light. Now we need to understand that there is no such thing as a yokeless life. It's just a matter of what we are yoked to. Jesus' yoke is easy and it's light. It's light for a couple of reasons. First, it comes along with his teaching. Take my yoke upon you, he says, and learn from me. To have his yoke means you'll be working. And that's actually a good thing. We're created for work, despite how that might sound. Work is not a result of the fall. God gave Adam work before he sinned. 
It is actually part of who we are. We're designed this way. As commentator Dan Doriani says, the cure for a heavy burden is not to have no burden, but a light burden, the right burden. As you move forward with Jesus and together as we move forward as a church, he will call us to work. He'll call us to do hard things for him, even suffer for him. But isn't working with Christ, even in suffering, better by far than living without him? Secondly, his yoke isn't heavy because of who he is. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, Jesus said. Here is what separates Jesus from everyone else. He's gentle and he's lowly. The word gentle means pleasant, mild, soothing, friendly. It's the opposite of rough, hard and violent. Jesus is not out to get you. His most foundational disposition is not to destroy you, but to save you. Not to strike you, but to comfort you. Not to do violence, but be gentle. When we go the wrong way, he gently redirects us. He doesn't shame us. He doesn't embarrass us. He gently leads us back to himself, to the right path, to learn afresh from him, to see him again for who he is and to fall in love with him all over again, just how he loves us. We were made to be with God. So when, he co- when we come to Jesus and take his yoke upon us, What we actually find is the kind of life that we long for, that we long to live, and we find it together. He becomes not just my saviour or your saviour, he becomes our saviour. He joins us together and he begins to use us for his glory. We start getting involved in things that we never thought we would get involved in. He shows us how to live for him. He carries the load, but he deploys us in mission. He sends us out into his fields ripe for harvest to do his work in the world. He's patient, he's tender, he's open, he's accommodating, he's understanding. When we stumble, he picks us up. When we can't go on, he carries us. When we doubt him, he proves himself. When we fail, we get his successes. When we sin, he's already paid the penalty. And the amazing thing is, Jesus is willing to be yoked to us and we aren't holding him back. Even more, he's happy to be stuck with us. He longs to be so. Nothing in him shies away from us. No sin is too great. No weakness too much. No failure too excessive. He comes down to our low place and takes us to his high place. He doesn't mangle us on the way, he's gentle. He knows our frame, he knows because he's been in the weakness of flesh. And his promise, you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Here's the second time Jesus mentions rest in this passage. The first rest was an immediate rest from coming to him the rest after the rest. The first rest is given, the second rest is discovered. Given, but also discovered along the way. The first rest as we come to him is instant relief. The second is a lifelong journey with Jesus. It's the rest of a learner, the rest of one who after receiving, now serves alongside his master. It's not a physical rest. After all, there is a yoke involved. There is a learning involved. Neither is it easy. It demands something of us. Jesus doesn't offer rest for our bodies. What he offers is rest for our souls. Maybe we'd prefer rest for our bodies. So so much of our life is driven now by how our body feels. We fall asleep at night because our bodies can't take anymore. I don't know about you, but even though I fall asleep, I often wake up tired. My soul needs rest and so does yours. Deep inside my soul, there is a need. No amount of physical rest can alleviate. There are memories in my past that I don't want to think about, but from time to time, they will rise to the surface, reminding me that I'm not good at all. There are things said, or things I didn't say, which I should have said. There are regrets that won't fade away. 
there are wounds that time won't heal. And you know what I'm talking about because you've probably had these things too. That's why Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. There will be trials. Jesus promised us that. We have battles to fight and hardships to bear and sufferings to endure. Jesus is not discounting that. What he is saying is that the comfort of the gospel outweighs them all. And as we journey with him, the message put it quite aptly. He says, walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it, learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't let anything heavy or ill-fitting come on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Thirdly, comfort is peace. We need a rest that stretches further than just today. We need eternal rest. We need to know that we can't ruin this sometime out in the future. We need a peace of heart, peace with God that lasts. We need a clear conscience. Jesus earned eternal rest and he graciously gives it to you and to me just by coming to him. You can have peace with God. Even if all the world stands against you, you can lay down at night and sleep well because God is for you. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. So to conclude, to all who are weary and need rest, to all who mourn and long for comfort, to all who feel worthless and wonder if God really cares, to all who fail and desire strength, to all who sin and need a saviour. Today I ask you, where do you see an absence of comfort in your life or your community? Can I encourage you this week to pray and partner with God to see this sign of the kingdom become a reality for your life? Because Jesus says in his word, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you for being with us today as part of our online service. It's been great to hear the word together and to worship together too. If you'd like to respond to today's message or get in touch with us, please head to our website or messages on social media. We will now close with worship and we look forward to seeing you again next week as part of our Alive Church online service. God bless. <laughs>
is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning. I know I will never be alone. Yes, I know. Cause I know I'll never be alone There is another in the fire Standing next to me There is another in the waters Holding back the seas Should I ever need reminding How good you think to me I count the joy come every battle Cause I know that's where you'll be I count that you're coming every bad Cause I know that's where you'll be I count that you're coming every bad Cause I know that's where you I count the joy I count that you're coming every bad Cause I know 